Hello, this is the screencast for my third year project using generative adversarial networks for facial expression generation. I am Tim. Facial expression generation here means given a single face image of any expression, the model is able to generate the selected expressions including neutral, happy, sad, surprised, disgust, angry, and fearful. Also, the generated image should preserve the same identity as the input. The generated adversarial networks, also known as GANs, is a generative model introduced by Ian Goodfellows in 2014. Basically, it is a model that can generate data similar to its training set. The training process of GANs is what makes it unique and exciting, which is based on an adversarial framework. The model consists of two components, a generator G and a discriminator D. This diagram shows the analog of GANs. The generator can be thought of as a forger who tries to forge paintings, and the discriminator is like a detective that needs to identify the counterfeit and the authentic work. During the training process, the generator continuously improves its ability to generate data that are indistinguishable from the authentic ones. The discriminator, on the other hand, tries to learn how to differentiate between the two. In a way, the discriminator and the generator are fighting against each other. In game theory, this process, also known as min-max game, to describe the model formally, we use a function g to represent the generator, which takes the random noise z as input and produce x prime. Similarly, the discriminator can be represented as a function d, which can take either x or x prime as input and produce the probability of the input being real. Normally in GANs, both the generator and the discriminators are realized using neural networks. To train a neural network towards a specific task, we need to define the objective for the training process. The objective of the discriminator is to maximize the value of the following function. Given the real data x, we want the discriminator d to predict it to be real in the probability as close to 1 as possible. In other words, we want to maximize the value of function d given x. Conversely, given the generated data, we want the discriminator to predict it to be fake, which is same as the probability of it being real should be as close to zero as possible. So 1 minus a value that needs to be close to zero, it's similar to maximize this part of the function to be close to 1. Altogether, the value of the whole function needs to be maximized. To do this, we can ascend its gradient. The objective of the generator is quite similar. For generator, we want it to generate data that is undistinguishable from the real ones. In other words, the generated data should be predicted as real with probability close to 1. Therefore, the result of 1 minus a value that needs to be close to 1 is similar to minimize the value of the entire function. To do so, we can use gradient descent algorithm. The main part of the project is to find a model that can achieve the goal. Since GAN is a brand new area of research, I have to learn it by myself and start from scratch. Therefore, I began with learning the basic concept of GANs through replicating experiments from papers. Then I gradually modified the working models towards the goal of the project. First, I built a deep convolutional GANs, also known as DC GANs, to generate handwritten digits from noise. Then I added the conditions into the models as the goal of the project is to generate expressions based on conditions. Since the toy examples with handwritten digits has shown good results, the next step is to apply the model to task of generating face image from noise. However, the model collapsed immediately. After investigation, it turns out the problem inherits in the objective function of GANs. A method was proposed to solve the issue. By updating the objective function, the new model is able to generate stable faces. To improve the quality of the image, the model further adapts the architectures from BE GANs, which result in high quality shop faces. Then the model was changed to generate faces from faces with conditions, but it collapsed again. So I started over by exploring the architectures of generator from a simple neural network called autoencoder, which was able to generate faces based on conditions. Nevertheless, the identity was not preserved. Another paper proposed a solution by adding extra feedforward connections in the network which helped with maintaining the identity, although the generated image was not sharp enough. 
Finally, by combining autoencoded and GANs with additional training objectives, the model is able to achieve the goal of the project. The structure of the final model is shown on this slide. The generator takes the concatenation of a condition and an image as the input, then outputs the generated image of the condition. Together with the real image of the same expression, both images are put into the discriminator. The discriminator needs to classify an image into one of the seven expressions as well as determine whether the input is real or fake. By comparing the results of the discriminations with the ground truth, we can calculate the values of the usual objectives of GANs. Here we call it adversarial loss. Given the real image, we want the discriminator to predict it as true and classify it into its original expression. By minimizing the difference between the classification results and the real labels of the image, also known as the classification loss, we can improve the accuracy of the discriminator for classifying real images. Given the generated image, we want the discriminator to predict it as a fake, but at the same time, we want the generator to produce expressions that will be classified by the discriminator into the same expression as the condition. Moreover, we want to make sure the generated image does not have the different identity. To do so, we take the generated image with its original expressions as the condition and put them back into the generator. Then, the resulting image is the reconstructions of the initial input. If we train the generator to minimize the difference between these two, then we may have a higher chance to preserve the identity. Altogether, we have the full objective functions of the model. Now I will give you a short demo of the final model which has been deployed on the internet for public access. The program in the backend will first find the face in the image, and then crop it out and resize it to 128 by 128 pixels. Finally, fit them into the model. Here you can see neutral, happy, sad, surprise, disgust, angry, fearful. The model was first evaluated on the qualities of the generated expressions. A facial expression classifier with accuracy over 98% was used. The result shows that among 14 evaluation samples, only one of them did not match the target expression. Further evaluation using questionnaire has a similar result, with only two samples did not match the target. In addition, the final evaluation also shows that the model is able to maintain the identity of the input in the generated image. Altogether, the model provides a satisfying solution to the project. The most obvious achievement of the the project is the creation of the final model. The more intangible achievements are the new machine learning knowledge at Ghent and the skills of understanding and reproducing ideas from the research papers. Thank you for listening.